All right, in this topic, we're going to be getting into uh, cloud formations and different types of clouds, um, the way we characterize clouds, and um, what we can do as far as as reading weather or possible forecasting weather on, on like daily weather forecast um, as a result of the types of clouds we see. So let's go ahead and get started. We know what condensation is. We know condensation is when you have vaporized water that is pushed up into the atmosphere and the higher up it moves it cools down and eventually it turns into liquid water that's condensation however condensation actually the way this process works there has to be some type of substrate some type of surface that condensation can form on uh, for example um, you, you can have condensation that forms on the outside of of a bottle of water, you can have condensation that forms on a windshield, condensation that forms on grass. Um, so what that means is condensation can't actually occur unless there's some type of substrate or some type of surface for it to occur on. You can't have water turning into liquid water um, if it has nothing to form on. So the way cloud formation occurs, the way this process of condensation occurs and cloud formation occurs is you need to have a substrate and the way it works is these clouds that form in, in our troposphere they usually are going to form on some type of particulate matter uh, dust and smoke uh, being the normal types okay uh, we call this process or they, we call this particulate matter in science we call it condensation nuclei like the dust particles or the smoke particles being the nucleus that allows that condensation and then the the cloud formation to occur and then here are a couple of examples forming on grass, forming on, say, spider webs. It can happen on any type of surface where there's a temperature difference between uh, inside that surface on the outside. All right, now let's look at the importance of clouds. Why are clouds important? Well, clouds are important because they tell us what type of weather, especially the, lo the, uh, uh, the, the daily weather, whether it be... Um, that day's weather chances or maybe what might happen the next day as far as weather goes as far as maybe temperature change or wind or maybe possible storms or rain um, it tells us that local weather okay it's a, it's a natural process that allows for uh, predicting maybe what will happen that day or maybe the day after or maybe in a couple days uh, based on the types of clouds that we can see All right, when we look at clouds, uh, to understand how these clouds or what these clouds mean and what they tell us, where they're located, maybe what they're going to predict, we look at five basic types of characteristics. We're going to try to determine the altitude that the clouds are found in, how high up into the troposphere they're going to be found, maybe the color they're going to have. Are they going to be lighter in color, maybe darker in color, uh, maybe a specific color like a greenish hue that might... Uh, predict maybe hell or possible supercells forming, uh, the density of those clouds, what shape they are, and then the how much cover they, they provide in, in the sky. Uh, we're really going to be focusing on altitude and shape and as far as cover um, goes and then whether or not they are going to bring rain with them. Those are the big ones. All right. <clears throat> there are three basic types of clouds that we're going to be looking at and then some combinations of these cloud types that are going to give us our different examples. So we can identify clouds maybe mainly three different ways by form and then by altitude and then we'll add in whether or not they uh, they carry rain with them. So by form we have three types of clouds that uh, that can be identified based on their appearance. That's going to be stratus, cirrus, and cumulus clouds. So there's three types of clouds that we can identify based on shape. So let's look at stratus clouds first. All right, stratus clouds um, are going to have a thin kind of blanket-like look to them. They're going to be gray in color. Um, most times these stratus clouds are going to uh, blanket or cover the whole sky. You really won't see a break in the different types and the different clouds that make it up. Um, they usually form uh, when a front moves through and pushes this uh, this warmer moist air up into the atmosphere slowly so it's a slow move into the ap uh, upwards up part of the atmosphere and it allows these stratus clouds to form and then here's a good picture that gives you a kind of a look at this 
overall blanket sheet like uh, dark gray um, thicker looking cloud cover uh, that can form and these are stratus clouds All right, our cirrus clouds. Our cirrus clouds are going to be more feathery, thin, more wispy in appearance. Uh, they're going to be our highest forming clouds, which means they're going to form the highest in the atmosphere. Um, and then when you see these types of cirrus clouds, these thin, wispy clouds, they are uh, an excellent indicator of possible storms that are approaching maybe a day or two away. Um, so not necessarily storms that might appear that day, but if you were to see some cirrus clouds, kind of like in this picture, these thin, wispy, high-forming clouds in the atmosphere, that's a good indicator that probably within the next day or two, you're going to be seeing uh, some type of storms develop in your area based on, uh, based on th this kind of like forecasting that is tied with these types of clouds. Um, this is just a... a a light refraction process uh, during the evening time, especially in the spring and summer, if you have some of these cirrus clouds in the sky, they can form something called a sun pillar um, as the sun is setting or maybe as the sun is rising and they strikes the cirrus clouds at the right angle, you'll get this sun pillar. Um, and it usually forms only when you have those cirrus clouds in the sky. So if you were to see this and you would know, okay, those are cirrus clouds um, and it could possibly mean within the next day or so storms could be approaching. All right, let's get to our third type of cloud based on its form, right, based on its form. So we've had stratus, we have cirrus, and now we're going to be looking at cumulus clouds. Cumulus clouds are going to, in essence, be kind of like uh, cotton balls in the sky. Okay, fluffy uh, cotton ball looking clouds. Now, depending on where they're located in the sky, if they're higher up, if they're more mid-level in the atmosphere, or if they're closer to the ground, they might have different appearances to them. But here's a picture that gives you an example. There are many different ways that these cumulus clouds can form. Um, but this one is a little bit more closer to the ground, and you can definitely see the, the cotton ball uh, fluffy um, form that they carry with them. Okay, so those are the three basic types of clouds based on formation. So we can characterize them based on the way they look. Stratus, cirrus, and cumulus. We can also add another category to those clouds and categorize them based on their altitude, where in the troposphere they're located, lower, middle of the troposphere or mid-range, and then higher clouds up in the more top of where our weather is located. So you've got cirrus, and you've got alto and stratus, and that would be high clouds. Uh, we could call them cirrus if they high, form higher in the atmosphere. We will call them alto if they form more mid-range, and then stratus if they form more lower. And once again, this is all happening in a troposphere, but depending on where in a troposphere, as far as altitude goes, we can categorize them based on uh, how high up in the uh, troposphere they are. So, for example, your cirro clouds, these are going to be the highest forming clouds. Here's some data as far as how high up in the sky they can be found, their temperature, that type of thing. Now, remember, clouds form through... Uh, through condensation and then actually the higher up you go that liquid condensation is actually going to turn into ice crystals so uh, when you're looking at these you're talking the higher they build ice crystals can form as a result and that's still going to add to the uh, to the cloud formation itself uh, but you can have cirro stratus remember cirro means high up in the atmosphere high up in the troposphere and then stratus are going to be those wispy feathery looking clouds so you can have cirro stratus so those feathery looking clouds that form higher in the troposphere you can have cirro cumulus which would be fluffy cotton ball looking clouds that form high in the atmosphere so cirro stratus or cirro cumulus and then here's a picture for each there's your nice cotton ball looking clouds higher up in the troposphere your cirro cumulus and then here would be your cirro stratus, those feathery, wispy-looking clouds um, that, for high, that form higher up into, uh, into your uh, troposphere. Your mid-level clouds, your alto um, clouds, are going to be more mid-range. And I like that last sentence because if you have alto cumulus clouds, these are going to be those, these puffy cotton ball clouds. They're going to be more mid-range clouds. And... Uh, Usually you're going to see these clouds form on more humid summer mornings uh, and they are a very good indicator that 
possibly later during that same day you could have thunderstorms form so if you see these alto cumulus clouds these puffy clouds are at a more mid mid range and it's a warm humid morning maybe during the summertime once again that would be a good indicator of possible thunderstorms later that day you could also have alto stratus alto mid range stratus those uh Stratus is that thin blanket uh, sheet of, of those gray clouds that can form in the sky. Okay, then there's some pictures that uh, go along with that as well. All right, and then your strato, your low level as far as altitude goes, lowest in the atmosphere as far as in the troposphere. Okay, you have strato cumulus. And then you have your, we're not going to say stratostratus, that would be a redundant, so they just call them stratus. Okay, here's once again a, a picture of your stratocumulus low to the ground, and that puffy look to them, that cotton ball look to them, that's your stratocumulus. And then your normal stratus clouds that are low to the ground, and once again that, that sheet-like gray blanket of, of cloud cover. Alright, and then a third characteristic that we're going to get to... <coughs> It'll be after we look at fog. We know that we have, um, we know fog is just clouds at ground level. We know how it forms. It's you have a difference in temperature between the ground temperature and the air right above the ground. Um, usually if the, the ground is warm and that air is a little bit cooler, it could cause that cool air to condense uh, on large proportions and then you see fog as a result. There are two types of fogs uh, depending on where they form is which one you're going to get. More coastal fogs are going to be your advection fog. And then your more inland fogs are going to look something similar to what you see here where you have this radiation occurring. Now sometimes if it occurs very quickly, you might not see as much radiation and it forms a nice blanket. But if you have an inland body of water, for example, you could see that radiating process occur. Uh, but then this is just a different type of fog. So this is just when you have a difference in ground temperature versus the air right above the ground. All right, now, our third category is we're going to type our clouds based on whether or not they carry rain. So we have, we categorize them by form, then we're going to categorize them by how high in the troposphere they go, and then we're going to categorize them by whether or not they bring rain. And the, type, the clouds that bring rain are going to be our nimbus clouds. So we're going to add nimbus or nimbo, a version of nimbus, to the name of the clouds if it's going to be a cloud that brings rain. The most common type here in Texas, uh, here in the Plains area, is going to be a cumulonimbus cloud. Cumulo meaning it's going to be a puffy white cloud, kind of like a big cotton ball, and then the nimbus means it's going to be bringing rain. These are very common, especially during the spring and summertime, clouds because this is where our rain, our thunderstorms, thunder and lightning, possible hail, and depending on the right conditions, it can produce supercells and form tornadoes uh, from our cumulonimbus clouds. And then our nimbo stratus, nimbo is the rain, and then stratus is that flat blanket looking gray clouds that covers the sky. This one is going to bring rain, but it's not going to have uh, maybe thunder and lightning like you would associate with a, a cumulonimbus or a thunderstorm. All right, and that's pretty much it on um, types of clouds how they form. Uh, here's what to watch for when you're looking for cumulus clouds, some different steps to remember, that cotton ball look, those types of things. Uh, here's some steps to look for when looking for nimbus clouds, those rain clouds, cumulonimbus being a big one. And then to when you're looking for cereal and stratus cloud, these are steps, these are things you can follow to look at when you're going to be looking for these types of clouds. And we're going to get a chance to go out and do this uh, on a later date.